So my wife Janet is um, pretty keen on sailing, but she's not that comfortable without an escape hatch. So I've been working pretty hard at ideas that I can come up with to, to solve this problem. So um, at Sunday Arbor, I came over here with a grinder and I've so I cut one out. <laughs> wow, that's a big hole. That is a very big hole. And uh, <laughs> I might not be getting any dinner tonight. So I went home last night and uh, no dinner for me. Janet's dirty. Uh, no, she's actually not. We agreed that this was going to happen. And to be honest, that escape hatch is, uh, is not a escape hatch. And today it's starting to shake shape. As you can see, I'm starting to fill in the void and create my helm station platform, which is going to be great for all you short people out there. Okay, this week, we're going to be basically laminating up our hard top from start to finish. The gel coat was done last week and essentially I'm going to get the whole thing done. There's a lot of time lapse in this. So there's plenty to watch there. It was brutally hot, brutally hot and Janet and I almost gave up on the job. But anyway, we got it done and it looks fantastic and we're stoked. Let's get into it guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Right, your apprenticeship starts today. <laughs> this is your first day, major spray up. Brilliant. As Janet and I apply the first couple of layers here on our hard top, I just wanted to answer a question about gel coat, uh, whether or not it's a self-leveling medium. Gel coat and flow coat are not self-leveling, and that means that really the important part of this is actually the mold surface. The gel coat will reflect exactly the mold surface, and it's vital to get that um, gel coat not too thick either. It's generally around 0.5 to 1 millimeter, or 18 to 20 mils in thickness, and often I'll invariably check this with a mill gauge, which is a small metal device that will check the gel coat as we lay out the gel coat. Uh, experience certainly counts, but certainly runs on the surface can be lightly sanded when the gel coat cures prior to laminating, so it's not as essential as a paint job. You're an awesome job, Jen. <laughs> well done. So we've got four layers down on this first third. So that's not a bad effort after gel coating. It's uh, 300, 300, 600, 300. Now we're ready for foam. This is probably a bit of overkill, but we will be walking around on this. So we're about to finish up this third, fourth layer. And uh, yeah, consolidation's gone really well. All in one sitting. Good chemical interface. Very important. <clears throat> Big, big day yesterday. We called it after about four hours. This and my preparation is critical. You just gotta be prepared, ready to go, because once that gun's running, you just gotta keep going until it stops. There's no, uh, there's no half measures here. You gotta keep going, no stopping. So I cover all of my substrates up before I start spraying because it is airborne. Even my camera gets a mist on it. So that's really why I've tarped up and why I'm really quite um, paranoid about the overspray, particularly around the area here. I don't want any overspray. So now it's going to have foam, uh, probably on this area around about 10 mil foam. And then I'll be going to a, a blend of different thicknesses at the back there. I'm all ready to start laying up another lot. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to start down on this end and I'll get the ends done and then I'll move the ladder across and do this center part here so I'm spacing it out here this one's going to start here go across and I'll do the end so Janet's going to come up we're going to get that smashed out this morning and then this afternoon I'll get this done so this will be completed by tonight the entire hard top will have its first four layers and then tomorrow morning I'll come in and get to foam while I'm still working with the chemistry um, Oh, just absolutely delighted with how that's gone. I mean, really nothing can go wrong now other than my gun packing it in. So as long as I keep that maintained, it should be pretty good to get this smashed out. Hopefully by the end of the week, it'll all be done.
So our hard top now has four layers on it, and uh, Janet and I have had a big couple of days. I'm a bit sore this morning. Uh, I, I find laminating quite cathartic, but working on this platform that I've got across the top here has been quite arduous on my back, and I had a bit of a bad back last night, so I mean, need to do some easy work today. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do two layers of the 1200 quad. Now, this exceeds the typical limit that you put on a laminate of 1800 grams. This is 2400 grams, so I'm exceeding it because I just need to get it done. But what I'm gonna do is just go around the perimeter and beef up the edges and provide a, a, a bit of reinforcement underneath the foam core that's going to sit on top of that and it'll be laminated over the, again across the top. So the idea will be that the foam core will sit here, just around the last two inches or so of this flange laminate and essentially then be tied back in as it comes down and that gives me a really good bond underneath and also an incredibly strong rigid structure to affect or avoid any delamination of that structure. Well, it served its purpose, and now it's got to go, doesn't it, Jen? <laughs> so Jen's going to disassemble the ladder. It's annoying me. It's in my way. I haven't got any way of trafficking around while I put this foam on. So it's Janet's job this morning to uh, to break down my my platform because I'm not going to need it anymore. I'll be able to walk on the foam, and the, the mould is definitely you strong enough. Start it apart? Go for it. No, I don't want it. Pull it apart. One down. Well, it looks super neat yesterday, but in a couple of hours, we'll have all the foam down. That's good having that platform out. Now, while I've taken the platform out, I can now traffic across this foam. I'll just have to have clean feet when I walk on it as I laminate it down. First things first, I'll just get it all glued down with the sea light, and then I can start to laminate it down and get it finished. Got Janet's mixing station now. <laughs> Got all these little mixing stations for Janet. This is the sea light, so this is an epoxy, but it's good enough. But uh, I like to set Janet up in a corner where she can just mix away while I slather it on. Hide me in the corner. <laughs> hide you in the corner. I'd never do that. <laughs> Why do I want to hide you? Tell you what, how's my judging of quantity? <laughs> <laughs> this is it. 
That's it. 400 bucks worth of sea light. Just enough to do this whole or cockpit roof. And if it isn't, you're going to have to spread it out. I'm hoping I've got enough to do this bit of step here too. So I've got to do the back side of that. And the last two pieces have got this large 10 mil and this large 30 mil uh, H80 here that's got to go down. So pretty much that's it for the day. And then what I can do tomorrow morning is come in and start to bevel all the edges around here to enable good laminating. So I'm going to be basically tying these in with three layers around, two layers on top of the whole surface, but then an extra layer of 600 right around the rim of this flange just to give it a really substantial um, strength. And the other thing I'm going to be doing is routing electrical conduits into it. I'm going to go into town tonight and get some conduits that are going to fit within here so we can run electrics and uh, solar panel leads and whatever else. That's it, we've just finished the large, last large part. The cockpit roof, the foam is done. So that's the last massive amount of foaming I have to do. I do have to do the back sugar stoop steps and a couple of other smaller parts, but that was another massive couple of days doing this foam here. Very, very important we get this done right. I'm ready for lamination now. I've got to cut a couple of conduits in it and I've got to sand a bevel all the way around the outside edges. So I'm going to do a bit of detail work over the next couple of days. I'm going to give the apprentice a day off so she can just go and be herself because she's been with me all week. And I'm going to get a haircut tonight. Can't wait for that. Janet's going to cut my hair. That should be good fun. Janet's got sea light in her earmuffs, which means that it's in your hair. She's got sea light everywhere. Good job. Awesome job. Right, oh, it's up to the, to the guy to come into work and do all the beveling tomorrow and then uh, some conduiting and we're done.
Okay, last two layers, Jen. Had enough yet or what? Come on, I'm hot. <laughs> You're hot, it is hot, it's 30 plus. Right out, here we go. I've come in this morning quite early. Uh, it's pretty early and, and the reason why is that yesterday afternoon I had a mutiny on the job. Uh, Janet essentially walked off the job, uh, not in anger, but she just couldn't cope with it anymore and quite frankly, so did I. Uh, it got to 38 degrees and around 85% humidity. It was frigging revolting. Um, I had a couple of little phase out moments while I was working up here. I mean, it was so hot. And, uh, and and it's just the humidity when you're wearing all the gear and you're working hard. I mean, we worked hard. We did four layers here yesterday on this entire thing and we left this last stretch. So this has got to be done now. Um, get it smashed it out this morning, go into town, scored myself another 40 gallon drum of resin, which is about the only drum in the whole country at the moment. So luckily I'm gonna go in and grab that and uh, then I'll be able to continue on with the sugar scoops and, uh, and a lot of other parts. But yeah, getting this done today, early in the morning before the heat hits us, it's supposed to be 35 again today, uh, and probably up around 90% humidity by lunchtime. So we've got to get this done. You just can't do this in that sort of humidity. And, and you know, the, whole, the toll it's taking on our health is probably not great either. Although we're wearing all the gear, um, you know, Janet and I aren't spring chickens. We're not youngsters anymore. And you've got to remember that age. You know, I'm in my mid 50s, so you do not want to be pushing yourself. Uh, that was a stress test beyond any stress test I've ever done. And uh, yeah, I'm starting to feel it today. So I'm going to smash this out now and get it finished. So I've installed this last layer 600 dry on the 300 that's on below it. And it's pretty important that I explain why I do that. It allows me to get it all pleated. So it's simply a matter of wetting it out, consolidating it down with a fin roller and then whacking the peel ply on. And it's a nice easy way to do it. It is always better to completely laminate all your layers down at once. Um, obviously the idea is of laminating is to consolidate all the layers into one part. Uh, I am still working on the chemistry here, but it certainly will be more a layered approach on this last bit here. Which It's time to do a bit of demolding. I've decided I'm just going to go around the perimeter here with some wedges and just see if I can get it to release. It's already totally released up on that front bit on that 10 mil. Where I'm concerned is back here on the 30 mil part at the uh, the rear of the cockpit cover. But at the end of the day, I'm just going to go work my way right around the perimeter, just release it with some wedges, stick some bits of MDF in there just to keep it lifted up, and then eventually be able to drive a bit of air in. Should just pop out pretty easily. It's pretty heavy, and uh, there's no way I'm going to be able to lift it without uh, a machine or a bunch of blokes. I mean, I think it's still sticking here in the middle, so if I can just sort of pry it up and get 
some little chunks of bone under it. Get my wedges out. It's actually demolded from the mold, but not from the MDF panel. So just there is the MDF panel, and that's the actual product. So I'm going to have to try to separate those somehow. Wow, wasn't anticipating that. <laughs> oh, shit. That actually wasn't that hard. All I had to do was just find a separating line and then put a wedge in between, you can see it there, in between the the MDF and the product, and it's just peeling away now, which is really nice. Might actually work my way along and uh, see if I can get it to come. You can see it under there, just right along the edge. I don't know whether a little bit of resin might have got down in underneath the, the, uh, the MDF or what, but you can see it here. There's always a bit of a problem when you put inserts in. You never quite know what you're going to get. And that edge looks like the plasticines hasn't quite done what it's supposed to do. But we'll tidy that up because there's going to be a lot of other stuff being added to this area along here. So I'm going to try to get this piece of MDF in underneath the, uh, the mould. That's helping. That's great. And what it is is the the um, the plasticine line that joining both of the MDF sheets together is is where it's sticking. So I've sort of got the solution. I just need a long piece of MDF to drive in there, a giant wedge to. Happy Harry. Say it. Happy Harry, I did. What did you say that for? Because you got the shits as usual. <laughs> I got the shits because I've been going three hours and demold it and I'm exhausted. Mm, I know okay. why. I know why. What it is. It is what it is. He's actually putting pizzas in the oven. No. Pardon? He's putting pizzas in the oven. It's like one of those pizza specialist ah. things. <laughs> it's almost out. I'm seriously, I'm seriously getting close. I've separated the 500 kilos of MDF off it, and now, anyways, 500 kilos. Ah, oh, it's not coming out. It's cool. Yeah, that was very cool. It's, oh. right here. it's definitely separated. Mm -hmm. Putting these little chops on. To leave it for the night so that it is. <laughs> get some bloody air in it. Get some air in me. <laughs> all right, so I'm up on the front here and I've got the same problem. It's perfect all the way along there, but it is catching right there. You can see that green plasticine there. And if I get a wedge in there, you can see that's the MDF. So if I can get that to break away, I think we'll have a complete and total release of this um, this mould because that's the only part that's catching is that big corner there and it's bloody heavy with all the MDF on it there's no way you can lift it so yeah I think um, given that I've sort of distended it I've got a little bit of cracking along there where I've been forcing it but yeah it's looking good looking good <laughs> so poor Janet just came up and I've been going at this for about four hours and um, yeah got me at my low ebb I when I'm up here on my own then I just let loose just get get into it and I forget the time so I'm a couple of hours late for dinner and um yeah I tend to I tend to sort of lose my nut when when people come up I don't know what it is I just sort of take it out on the people I love and uh I think we're all pretty guilty of that I didn't really take it out or I just got the shits and she saw it and um you know, God love it, she puts up with that shitload from me. But, you know, I'm not a, not a violent guy, I'll just say it as it is, you know, I work with some things when they didn't give me the shit, they give me the shit. So, in here, is that 
I've got a lot of joins in here. There's a hell of a lot of stuff going on in there that are, um, that's going to stop us from getting this out. So I've just got to be very, very careful that I don't. And the more I do it, the better. Wow, that was easy. God, that just totaled one. Yep. Let's say the right one's totally free. I think that, uh, that other radius up on the corner up there is going to be a bit of a problem because it's done the same thing, I think. But yeah, surprisingly easy to get off. You've just got to work your way through. <clears throat> oh, it's looking good, everyone. We've got the hard top. And now you can see the whole thing right through there. It's totally released off all of that MDF along that side. Hopefully you can see that. I look down here. Totally released off there. So, get over the other side there. Just got to do that last radius there and that should be enough. Ten days in the making, this hard top from probably doing the major design work and then infilling gel coating, laminating, foam core. And that, our hard top is now demolded. You can see it's basically completely separated. I've got total release. <laughs> and that is a good thing. I can see right through to the other end, all the way under. I'm just gonna leave it hang there for the night. And I think I might put some ratchet straps around it and, and just so I can rig it for lifting without having to put mounts in it. I really don't want to be putting any lifting mounts in it if I can avoid it, because they're just going to have to get grinded off anyway. And you know, I'm better off to put some straps right underneath it on both sides, lift it up, and then I might even be able to turn it within those lifting straps. I don't know, maybe suspend it from the purlins in the factory here, because it's not that heavy. And that would actually be a very nice way to turn this over. Uh, I'm not really sure I want to turn it over just yet. I've got to think about what I need else to do in it. But at this stage, it's pretty light. I'd say it's probably only 150 kilos. But yeah, that's pretty amazing, really. 30 mil foam core combination, 10 mil with the helm station cut out. Uh, absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Once again, I'm a very happy boy. I had the shits an hour ago and now I'm happy again. Doesn't take much to make me happy as long as things go right in the end. I'm good. I'm going to go home and have a beer. See you guys.